It's Mash CTV. Two full hours of Mash C laughs. What about rank? Can I help it if I'm not as rank as you? Weeknights starting at 6 on VTV. Time and temperature brought to you by your local Honda dealer. The Live Viper 6 Skyview Network, sponsored by Terry Lambert Hyundai. Tracking tropical depression, Francine, that continues to weaken, but the impacts remain. I'll have details coming up. Right now on News Channel 6 and 4, why a closed bridge in Aiken will not reopen. Plus, how a ruling by the South Carolina Supreme Court may impact students attending private schools. And the proposal for a state-of-the-art sports complex in Columbia County. A look at the plans and where it might be located as your news at 4 starts now. Live from Television Park, this is WGBF News Channel 6 at 4. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Brad Means. And I'm Jenny Montgomery. Thank you for joining us. Coverage you can count on begins with a search underway across several counties in South Carolina for two escaped teenagers. Investigators say 18-year-old Malachi Usri and 17-year-old Robert Bissonette IV escaped from a behavioral health facility in Lexington County. That was back on August 28th. If you know where they are or you see them anywhere, call 911 and SLED. The city of Aiken announcing that one of its bridges will soon be closing for good. The Union Street Bridge closed nearly two years ago due to weight restrictions. The city's been working with the State Department of Transportation to reopen it, but the bridge has failed to meet safety standards, and it will now remain closed. City leaders say this does not come as a surprise. We've known for a decade plus that once the bridge does not pass an inspection, it would be closed. It's certainly very unique and a wonderful structure to, to experience uh, driving over in a motor vehicle, but it is not uh, built to those modern uh, safety uh, specifications. Once they get written confirmation, the city will hold public input meetings about what folks in Aiken want next. You'll find out what that means for drivers tonight at 5. Goose Creek, South Carolina now, where a train hit an 18-wheeler that was carrying a military vehicle today. Deputies say it happened when that big rig tried to drive over the railroad crossing and the train hit it tank and all. No reports of injuries. Augusta leaders are pushing forward to try again to name a permanent city administrator. As we told you, they did not. Yes, Brad and Judy. All right, Miller, thank you. The South Carolina Supreme Court rules parts of a law that diverted tax money to private school tuition is unconstitutional. The Department of Education says it has already stopped payments for tuition and fees. Scarlett Lizjack reports. The South Carolina Supreme Court says a portion of the Education Scholarship Trust Fund Act violates the state constitution's ban on public money being spent on private schools. Palmetto Promise Institute is a nonprofit that researches public policy and state legislative issues. Senior fellow Warren Smith says the ESTF program allowed qualifying parents to apply for state scholarships to use towards their children's education. This is a choice program uh, that parents can use to just to customize, create a, uh, a program for their child. You know, every child is different. Every child learns differently. Every school is not right for every child. This allows parents to do that customization that matches the needs of their of their child. We're told this school year was the first year for the program, and parents were able to use awarded funds for various educational expenses. Parents can receive funds in a portal, an online portal, and then the parents on behalf of their children can direct those funds to a wide range of educational providers, private schools, public schools, therapy, tutoring, lots and lots of different options. Smith says the court's decision to strike down the program is unexpected. It's a real shocker and a disappointment for us uh, because we have advocated that every child, no matter what their income, should have an opportunity of choice, not just the local public school to which they're assigned to by zip code, but a wide range of choices. Now that the program was deemed unconstitutional just weeks into the school year, 
Ms. says there are a lot of questions that will need to be answered. A lot of a lot of these low and moderate income children, they're already in schools, they're already in tutoring, they're, they're already benefiting from the program. And we are trying to determine now, is the state going to have to claw back these funds? Well, the South Carolina Department of Education says it will work closely with parents to help them find another school for their child if they can no longer stay at their current school. Savannah River Nuclear Solutions set to host its annual CSRA College Night tonight for high school students. They can meet and talk to representatives from more than 100 colleges and technical schools. Seniors can register to win 15 $1,000 scholarships. There are seminars for parents. All students encouraged to show up for college night, even if they don't know what they want to do after high school. Even if in their mind they're thinking, college is not for me. We will have technical colleges there, and we will have the apprenticeship program there, which are not college track programs. But, you know, you might think college isn't for you, but maybe when you walk in and you see some of those colleges, you might rethink it. CSRA College Night open to all high school students. It's free to attend. It's at the Augusta Convention Center on Reynolds Street from 5 to 8 tonight. A new retail and athletic complex could be coming to Columbia County. Hannah Latier has those details. The developer wants to rezone this property across from Patriots Park on Columbia Road from residential to special to build a multi-sport and retail facility as well as a possible hotel. It would house indoor and outdoor fields and tracks, multi-purpose courts, a gym, an aquatic center, a fitness center, and more. Commercial and retail buildings will be fronting the road. The developer sees it as a regional hub for sports and recreation, boosting the local economy. It's getting mixed reactions from neighbors we spoke to. That would be awesome because then we wouldn't have to waste gas, you know, to get further out just to go to a restaurant or even like swimming and working out. It already takes a long time for us to get down William Q Parkway just to get down to the block, you know, the end of the road. So if they build other stuff here, it's going to just cause major congestion problems. That's what I think. The proposal will go to the county's planning commission on October 3rd. If it passes through the board of commissioners, the developer wants construction to be complete by early 2026. In Grovetown, Hannah Latier, WJBF News Channel 6. State lawmakers and cybersecurity experts met at the Georgia Cyber Center to discuss the future of artificial intelligence. With the evolution of technology comes the challenge of staying up to speed on all new advancements, especially when it comes to artificial intelligence. That's the goal of the House Technology and Infrastructure Innovation Subcommittee on Artificial Intelligence. The key point that we're making is that your data, my data, everyone's is being promulgated out there at a faster and faster rate. Um, the gentleman from the Heritage Foundation spoke uh, and made some great points about how everything you do on a computer uh, is being linked across different computers. All that data is being collected when you walk around the city. Uh, there, are, there are the security cameras that potentially pick you up. Where is all of that going? Cyber experts say while AI's purpose is to help people do their jobs, all the information given can be used nefariously by people. So it's important to be educated on the use of it. We'll have the full story right here on News Channel 6 at 7. Be sure to check your big Powerball tickets because three purchased in South Carolina will expire one week from today. And one is from our area. Yeah, somebody bought a $50,000 winning ticket at Moe's Convenience and Tobacco Store on San Ferry Road in Beach Island. Those winning numbers are 6, 23, 25, 34, 51. And the Powerball number is 3. You have to claim the prize at the Lottery Claim Center in Columbia by next Thursday. Coming up, keeping creepy crawlers out of your kids' hair and out of their school. A look at the changes health experts are making to treat lice. The latest drought monitor shows the worsening drought conditions in portions of the area. Thankfully, we have some beneficial rain in the forecast. I'll have details coming up. Facebook or Instagram. Welcome back, everyone. Gone are the days when a child with lice would be sent home from school. And you may have seen reports out there that the CDC has changed its guidelines on lice. Morgan Francis now with a look at what's fact and what's fiction. 
we're very busy at this point in time and one of the busiest years we've had. Business is booming for Gil Farrell and his wife who own Lice Clinics in Matthews. In July, they saw double the number of patients they typically see at about 170. Lice is a critter that likes everybody, clean heads and dirty heads. Farrell says the CDC's guidance on how to treat the scalp invasion will only send him more customers. Well, if this is a perspective, I would say, hey, you know, it's going to spread and it's going to keep us busy, you know, that's job security. But on the other hand, you know, if I had a child, I wouldn't like it. On its website, the CDC reiterates its guidance has not changed, but confirms it doesn't recommend students to be sent home early from school. They can then return as long as they started treatment. They wait for that opportunity, and they've got the little claws, and they just grab right onto your hair, and it only takes one. Now, if your head is feeling a little itchy at this point, you're not the only one. That is called a mental itch. Farrell says over-the-counter treatments kind of oftentimes bug. kill the bugs that are alive, but don't get rid of the unhatched eggs. The medical equipment he uses acts as a dehydrator for both. He says parents can help prevent the spread by using tea tree oil or a deterrent spray. Wow. He also recommends the schools revisit their policies surrounding lice contraction. Let the children go home and get treated because it's just going to spread as long as they're sitting there. So again, the CDC guidance hasn't changed, but the public health agency no longer recommends that students be sent home early from school. They can return as long as they start treatment. And if you're not sure if a person has had lice, see your health care provider. Don't go away, Miller, looking at more rain on the way. Next. Weather headlines on WGBF News Channel 6. Brought to you by Hickson Roofing. If your roof needs fixing, call Mr. Hickson. just bought a home in Cape Cod at an $800,000 discount. That's because it might end up in the ocean. The 59-year-old told The Guardian, life's too short. Let's see what happens. It's going to eventually fall into the ocean, and it may or may not be in my lifetime. The home was listed for $1.2 million in 2022. He bought it for $395,000 last year. It's pretty. What a beautiful view while he has it. While he has it, a lot more coverage in the water. Yeah, absolutely. Until that day. A lot more coverage you can count on next at 430. Including the U.S. Postal Service delivering at a very high uh, rate as they take a hit because the agency's cutting costs. How this could impact you and how you get your mail.